Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Today is a repair video and we're going to be taking a look at some damaged HD0 VTXs and specifically a race version one. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the diagnostic steps that I took to actually test for the problem, what was actually wrong, and then at the end, we're gonna see if we can actually fix it. Now, I just wanna say up front, if you find this video interesting, please do consider hitting the subscribe button if you're not a subscriber already. If you'd like to support the channel to allow us to keep making content like this, please do check out the links in the description to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons for helping us to keep making content like this. Anyway, let's get on with it and let's take a closer look at some of these VTXs. So the user has sent me over four HD0 VTXs that he's had issues with, whether they be as a result of a crash or they've stopped working. We've got a race version one and we've got three of the original whoop boards. Now he's very kindly labeled them up and given me this little note, which simply says, number one, doesn't work, can't remember what the problem was. Number two, video looks cartoonish after a crash. Swap the camera, but to no avail, not sure what the problem is. Number three, I can see already, but that one is a UFL problem. The UFL has been ripped off and there seems to be a bit of damage on the board as well. And number four, crash it, like crash, but the video went and no signal, not troubleshooted much, so he's gonna send them to me. So the plan is to get these on the bench one at a time and have a look at what the situation is and see if we can recover any of these and get at least one of them working. Chances are the UFL one works, it's just the connector's an issue. It looks pretty bad, but we'll need to take a look at it under the microscope. So I think what we'll do is we'll start with number one and go from there. So this is board number one under the microscope. And as I've said, this is the HD0 TX5 R.1, which is the race version one. Before we even try and power it up or anything, I just wanna have a scout over it just to have a look if I can see any issues, anything missing, anything untoward. I hear there, that, that's just a bit of a hair. That's, that's nothing to be worried about. Just get a pair of tweezers on that a second. Yep, that's nothing. Moving around, all looks good. UFL connector looks nice and solid. Moving up to the power amp side. All looks fine, bound by the voltage regulation. All looks good so far, no damage to the MIPI connector either. That all looks good. Just going to do a visual on the power input connector because he's been using the connector on that. That looks fine. I know it's um, blurred there. You guys can't see it. Okay, let's flip over to the other side. Looking around. All looks good. Nothing missing. Nothing hanging off. Back side of the power amp there. Overall, I'll be honest, this board looks very, very clean. I can't see any signs of damage. Nothing like that. No cracks on the DiviMath chipset there. That looks fine. Nothing on that. That all looks good too. PA looks in order. Everything looks very good. Okay, so I think what we'll do now is start doing some power tests on it. We're not going to power it up a minute. I'm just going to check some basics. We'll check it for shorts and things like that. So I'm going to power up the bench multimeter, we'll stick it on continuity mode and we'll stick it on diode mode first of all, there we go. And we're just gonna check a few things. So we'll check this diode here, which is on the power input. It's always good to start checking things like this first, just to give you an idea. So, okay, that side, spin him round. Okay, we're getting a reading on that. No, no beep, but we are getting, we're getting it one way, not the other. So I think he's probably okay. If we look at on the bottom of the board, so we got positive and ground. So let's just check there's no short there. Nope, that looks fine. Ground is looking good. Okay, nothing so far looks particularly untoward. We should have our power input, which is, doo -doo -doo, so that's that's V plus, which is coming in off there. You can see that pad coming around to there, which is good. So far the diodes seem to be reading okay, but I think what we'll do, 
is we'll do some proper checks on him before we move forward. And if I just get in a bit closer, if we can just then have a look at what the circuit is for this. So the circuit is looking like it comes into there. And does that go to that leg of that transistor? Let's just have a look. Let me show you guys that. And then to the, yes, it does. I'm just checking further over here just to see if it's meant to come to here. So what it looks like, the power comes out of the diode into the transistor. Yeah, and then it'll probably come out of there. And if I do a test there, this probably feeds in to other places on the board. There are voltage pads on this we can check in a minute as well. So if I, if I just zoom out to show you. On various places on these boards, so if we come right out, you can see we've got test pads. So there's a ground pad down here, 1V2, so that's 1.2 volt, 3.3. So we've got some test pads. We can go on to have a look what's going on and make sure that we're getting the power. At the moment, everything looks nice. We've got no major problems. So I think what we'll do is I'll get a harness connected. Let's get it powered up and let's see what happens. Okay, so we've got it wired up on a battery and we're going to use a short saver just to make sure nothing uh, too underward goes on. We've got a HD0 camera fitted. We've got an antenna on the UFL as well, just to make sure uh, we don't burn nothing out. So what we'll do is power up on the short saver and we'll bring it in and we'll power and we can see that there is no life at all, no short. So it's not shorting out, but there's definitely no joy at all from the VTX. Shut him off again, shut him back on. No flashing LEDs, which are over here, which would indicate to me it's probably a power issue, if I'm honest. Um, that's what that's going to tell me. So I think what we need to do is get in a bit closer and just do a few more tests there and see what's going on. So let me get the meter. Okay, we're now in closer. So we can now just hop in and take a little bit of a closer look. So what I'm going to do is go onto that diode there, which is giving us full pack voltage. If we come on the opposite side, yeah, we're getting voltage to there. So we know there's voltage coming into the board and it's coming through the diode. If we now start taking a look at some of these test pads at what we're getting on these, and these will start giving us an indication of what is going on the board. So we've got this test pad here. We've got nothing. We've got 1.2 volt on this one should be there. Nothing at all. That's a ground pad. I'm not sure what that one is over there. That's nothing as well. I need to check what these other ones are. I think that's a five volta. No. So we've got no power, nothing whatsoever. So we've got power coming in, but there's nothing going beyond there. So let's get it back under the microscope and let's dive in a bit closer and see if we can do some more testing. So we should be getting the full battery voltage across this diode here. So if I just check that there on the multimeter, yeah, we're getting 14.7, that's absolutely fine. We then have a transistor here, I believe, and we should be getting that same voltage out of that transistor. Yeah, we are, we're getting 14.73 there. And then this is a five volt regulator here, basically a buck regulator. So we've got first pin is ground, second pin is five volt, third pin is input. So if we go onto the input pin, again, we should be getting battery voltage. And if we go onto the output pin, we should be getting five volts. However, we are not. We are getting 0.04. Fourteen point seven three in, no out. So it's looking like this four three zero two regulator that should be outputting five volts isn't, and we're getting nothing out the back of it at all. What I will check is that there isn't a short on this side of it. We'll check that in a minute now, but the basics are we're getting voltage to it, no voltage out. So that regulator has probably popped and we're going to need to replace it. Let's just check that there isn't any shorts on the output. So we're just gonna kill the power, disconnect it. 
just to make sure that there's no chance of creating a short anywhere in the system. And again, what we should get is ground to this pin here. Yep, we do. And what we want to just check is that there's no ground here. Ooh. So the question though, is, is the short on the transistor or is the short on the actual output? So we'll lift the transistor because we're not getting an output. So we'll lift that now and we'll do the same test again. So the regulator's removed, it's all clean off. So if we just check, we've got ground there and we'll check on the output. Boom, the short has gone. No problems at all. That all looks fine. Just check continuity through the coil looks good. Yep, that's fine. So it looks like it was just that regulator. Now, I need to have a look actually if we have any of these on any of the other boards. Now, I actually found a regulator off one of the Whoop boards. It's the same part actually. However, it is rated slightly different. The original one on this board is rated a little bit higher than the one rated on the Whoop board. However, in all of my tests, I'm not seeing that rating is going to make a difference. So I'm going to go for the swap, test it and see what happens and go from there. Okay, so I've done all of the tests I can. It is working absolutely fine. I've put it through quite a substantial burning on the bench. This one, just to make sure that regulator isn't going to give us any problems. All seems fine, all looks good. It's working as expected. So it's ready now to go back to its owner. I actually left it running with a cooling fan for over three hours, just to make sure that there wasn't any signs of issues, any problems like that. Now, as for what the cause of that regulator popping was, I don't know. I think it's probably a surge and a crash, just something that's just trips it over the edge and shorted the regulator out. But it's all been done, it's all replaced, it's all up and running. We've taken the regulator off that other Whoop board. Yes, they do appear to be rated slightly differently, but I suspect this one's slightly overrated simply because of the additional complexity. But I don't see a reason why that's going to cause any problems. And as I've said, I've done all of the extensive testing that I can do. So that's it. It's all ready to go back to its owner.